Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today I just wanted to give you uh, just a demonstration of what happens when the blower motor does not turn on, or you have an extremely high um, resistance to airflow, maybe a completely clogged filter uh, or a collapsed ductwork. So here we go. I'm just going to show you basically the coil freezing. The, the system is not on presently. Okay, this temperature is on the suction line, and our gauge set pressures are equalized. So here we go. Normally you would wait five to ten minutes to check the actually adjust the charge, check and adjust the charge. But as you can see our vapor pressure and temperature are just skyrocketing downwards. All right. There is no there's absolutely no heat for the coil to absorb, so the coil just ends up getting colder. All right. Uh, presently, we have about 11 degrees of temperature in the saturated state in the middle of the evaporator coil, and we have a temperature coming out at 33 degrees. we're going to be basically losing any superheat that we have. As this coil freezes, you're going to have frost getting over, coming coming over, and then it's going to turn into a solid block of ice. It's going to take a while to turn into a solid block, but it's going to start from the bottom and move its way up to the top. Right now we have 27 degrees on the suction line out at the condensing unit on the suction line. Right now we have a nine nine degrees of temperature. Saturated temperature on the evaporator coil and 25 degrees actual out at the condensing unit. The reality though is that um, we really don't have much superheat even though it says we do. We're, we're losing it. We have liquid getting back to that compressor. The only way you have superheat is with an absorption of heat, and we don't really have any absorption of heat uh, when we have frosting building on our fins and on our copper lines. All right, the Evaporator coil, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's cracking. You can hear it's just like some ice is forming and stuff. Um, it's not necessarily cracking like the refrigerant's cracking or anything, but that's just the ice moving. Presently, our saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil is about 6 degrees. Coming out, it's reading about 23. Just so you know, I just added some insulation on the temp probe because we should not have any superheat. And so it's it's actually absorbing heat from the room, that temperature sensor. Okay, so now you see the temperature is actually skyrocketing downwards. I just put some Armaflex, some, some insulation, zip tied it around the temp sensor on the suction line. So you see that we really don't have uh, much superheat at all. So you see the ice forming on the lines is just going to turn into a solid block of ice. This is not good for the compressor. All right? At all. That's a vapor compressor, so when you have liquid actually getting into the compressor, it's just going to end up ruining the compressor. It's only supposed to be compressing gas. Saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil due to our blue gauge, all right? That's about 2 degrees saturated temp. Suction line says 8.6, and we hear more cracking going on. That's just that's the ice forming. I'm not going to let this go crazy, crazy long time because I do want to use the unit again. But this is um, a unit that was built just for checking and diagnosing and working on. This is not a uh, someone's unit like at their residence or anything like that. We just built this here just to, in order to show what happens.
that temperature can't really go down much more. It's actually still absorbing heat, I believe, through the insulation because it says it's, we ha we're at two degrees saturated temp on the middle of our evaporator coil. Okay, that gauge set's actually tilted upward, so it may look like it's a little bit more to you, but it's actually not. So two degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil, our temp sensor says 5.8 on the suction line out by the condensing unit. It could also be picking up heat on the way out to the condensing unit. All right, that that uh, temp sensor is not that that long. That's why we're actually able to have the um, the multimeter here reading our temperature right next to the evaporator coil because the outdoor unit is not very far away. All right, so it just gets worse and worse until it just builds a solid block of ice. All right, so I just wanted to show you that just so you could see it. It's going to just get become freezing more and more and more and more until it's just more of a block of ice. If you were to run into this in the field, if it is a solid block of ice, you do need to let that melt before turning the fan on. Because if you try to turn the fan on with a solid, and I mean solid block of ice, you're going to ruin the blower motor. If it's only partially frozen, then that's great. Yeah, turn on the blower motor because it'll help uh, defrost the evaporator coil. Okay, uh, But you're going to have some melting and falling through the unit. That you got to be aware of this. You know, You want to let it... Uh, be as natural as possible when you're trying to defrost stuff, but you know, you're also there as a service tech trying to get the job done. But just realize you're going to have water falling in spots where it's the, the, the condensate pan can't catch it. All right, but first you got to melt the coil down and uh, and then you can go ahead and check the refrigerant charge and see what's going on. But yeah, but you can't adjust the refrigerant charge or do anything until that evaporator coil is unfrozen. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.